And I want to say thanks, everyone, for being here this morning. I do appreciate it. I know, hey, Saturday morning, um, you've probably got um, a lot more things on your list to do today. So I don't want to waste your time. Let's kind of dig into this stuff. This is the only slide you're going to see today. We're going to jump right to the charts. And what I wanted to, to spend some time on is I wanted to spend some time on just some real simple things that you can do to help finding a tr uh, find a trend and stay in a trend. Uh, for me, trending is is as important to me as breathing almost um, when it comes to trading. Um, if I don't have a trend, I'm not in this. I'm not in the charts. As a matter of fact, I'm not looking at the chart, and I don't. I don't care. Um, I need the trend. I want that easy trade of a stock that's already proving it's moving in a direction, and I just want to follow that direction. And so I've worked to um, over the years, and and you guys have done this stuff well. There's nothing new under the sun uh, when it comes to trading, trading indicators, those kind of things. So I just want to talk about some of the simple things uh, that really make a big difference in being able to follow the trend. So we're going to jump right into some charts. Now you guys know that for me, um, finding trends or, and working with trends, let me go to, um, you know, just a chart like PepsiCo. Whoops. PepsiCo. There we go. Is is the key to key to my trading success really? I just follow trends and I just follow the patterns that are within those trends. I don't try to do anything fancy. I don't try to predict anything. I just want to move along. Now you guys know that I think one of the most important things that you can do for um, identifying good chart patterns and finding trends is to create a simple chart. And what I mean by that simple chart is I want that white background chart with black and white candles. Our eyes are capable of seeing black and white patterns much easier than anything else. And if you cloud that chart with too much data, too much information, you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're going to miss these trades and miss this opportunity to trade these very, very easy trends to follow. Now, one of the things that I think is probably, and this obviously isn't an indicator, is, is just drawing up a chart. Just very simply drawing up a chart. Having that one naked chart where you draw up those, those um, support resistance levels, you draw up the trend, and you're simply watching and waiting for the next entry into the trade, okay? But beyond that, how can we how can we use some of these indicators to help us find or identify these trends? Now, you guys know I'm going to switch to a different chart here, um, and let me shut this off. So here's our same chart on PepsiCo, and how can we simple things that we can find do to identify or to get a better um, entry into that trade. When does this trade get good? Well, you guys know for a long, 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 long time, um, and I use it every single day in my um, list, my sorting list, is I am sorting stocks by, by um, a 34 EMA trending 20 days. I do this every day. In fact, multiple times a day, all I'm doing is looking for that 34 exponential that is trending up 20 days or trending down 20 days. So you can see I've got this 17 on here. I changed it to a 17. Let me change this back to a 34. And I want to just take a second um, to show you this. And there's nothing, there's nothing fancy uh, uh, about that indicator. This is just a 17 EMA excuse me, a 34 EMA uh, moving average. But can you guys see how, and it, I don't know why, um, I don't know why this works so well, but when this um, breaks its downtrend, notice we get that identification with that 34 EMA right there. 
And from there on, we get this nice little trend. So I know the 34 EMA is kind of loose and some of you are thinking, well, it's too loose for me. I've got to have a real tight indicator. <clears throat> I prefer most of the time for my indicators when I'm looking for stocks, I want those indicators to be relatively loose. And the reason that is, is I want to determine the price pattern. I want to determine whether I like that trend or not. And I don't want a tight indicator cutting out some really good potential trades because I moved it too tight. And I got too detailed in trying to narrow this down to the perfect entry. I, um, I, I know most of you guys know this at, the, at this point in time, but there's no such thing as a perfect entry. There's no such thing as a perfect setup in a trade. We have to get past that. That's right, Steve. Um, we want to we want to look at these charts. And one of the things that I find kind of fascinating is traders that don't want to do the job of trading. The job of trading is looking at charts. But we try to over define and 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 try to um, create this perfect little thing that's going to bring us the three trades we should, should trade today that has no chance of losing. And we waste years of time doing that. So we know that doesn't work, right? We've all tried it. We've all wasted a lot of time doing that. So our job as a trader is to look at charts. So how do you narrow down the number of potential targets? You work from a watch list. You work from a watch with a list of qualified stocks. Okay, that watch list should screen out those that have low volume or doesn't, doesn't meet a volume requirement for you. It should screen out the prices that you can't afford or don't want to trade. And after that, after you've developed that good quality watch list, we want to determine these trends in a very simple way. Okay, and that 34 EMA, just right out of this list of mine, does that. I can sort through this list very quickly and I can find those stocks that are beginning a trend or are currently in a trend and I simply move through this list watching and waiting for the next entry into those trades. Doesn't take any heavy lifting. Okay? Doesn't take any heavy lifting at all. Yeah, I have a code for that. Let's see. Um, it's the simplest code in the world. Anybody can do this. All that code says is that the exponential 34 EMA 20 days ago is less than it was 15 days ago, and it's less than it was 10 days ago, and it's less than it was <laughs> five days ago. All it's looking is for a, a rising 34 EMA. That's it over the last 20 days. And why 20 days? There's nothing magic about 20 days, okay? The 20 day idea came in to me because usually bottoms take time, right? Before a stock can really turn and move. Um, I, I played around with lots of different, um, a, a different numbers and I ended up coming up with 20 being um, one of the ones that just gave me a lot of really good targets, a lot of really good hits on those on those charts. So you can see on Adobe here how beautifully that 34 EMA something that simple 34 EMA helps you identify that trend okay 
Now the same thing is true on any intraday chart or longer term chart. We always get so complicated in the way we trade that we overanalyze, we overdo it, and we end up passing by charts that have great potential. Now, folks will look at this, and the first time they look at this chart, they'll say, well, there's no reason to buy this today, so I'm not looking at it again. And that's the wrong thing to be thinking. When you look at this sort, when you sort by the 34 EMA, all you're looking for is a stock that's trending and a stock that's respecting that trend. That's all you're looking for. You're not looking for an entry signal. You're not looking for the trade today. You're looking to build a qualified list of stocks that are trending. That's it. Don't be trying to discern whether that's a buy signal today or not a buy signal. Put that chart in a list, mark up that chart, and then start doing your evaluation whether or not that is a viable trade, a trade that's setting up for you. Okay, We try to combine all of these things in such, such a way that um, we end up preventing ourselves from being able to um, analyze those trades. We'll flip through charts like this so quickly and say, well, um, there's no buy signal there. And we miss the fact that, hey, this has started a trend. And we probably should be paying attention to this trend. Putting that trend in a list. And by the way, this works just as good for downtrends. Look at this beautiful downtrend here. All these signals for that potential downtrend. Works just as well for a downtrend as it does an uptrend. Okay, so we're just looking through those charts trying to identify those good quality stocks that are trending. The price action is somewhat concise. And what I mean by concise is it's deliberate. It's not whipping all over the place. When you look at stars, when you look at PepsiCo, all these charts that I've been talking about here over and over and over lately, you don't see lots of whippy price action. You don't see big spikes and long wicks and tails. You see concise, deliberate price action. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now there is a bit of a modification to this. If you prefer weekly charts, I want you to notice that on a weekly chart, that 34 weekly pulls it a little bit too far away from price, okay? Pulls it a little bit too far away, and that's where this gets changed to a 17. If you're looking for a weekly, use the 17 EMA because that tightens that up considerably and helps you see that trend as it begins to break and develop. I mean, what more, I mean, oops, how much better of a signal do you need than that right there? That the stock has finally found its footing and it's placed the technically correct pattern in here that we're looking for for a trade. Okay, so it's a very, very simple way to identify those charts that are trending. Now, what you want to do is you want to screen these charts, screen these charts, put them into a list, and then start doing your evaluation. You can take the moving average even off. You guys know that most of the time I don't have any averages on my chart, and I'm going to turn on my drawings, and I'm going to start identifying trends, price patterns, all of those kind of things to determine the next entry into the trade. Because you guys have heard me say this about 100,000 times and I'm going to keep saying it, that there's no easier way to make money in the market than to find a stock proving it wants to trend, it wants to go up or go down, and just wait for the next entry. Just wait for the next entry. That's all you've got to do. Wait for the next entry. Okay. Now I'm going to take some, uh, just a, a, a one more step here, and I'm going to go back 
let me go back um, where I don't have any lines on my chart here. And let's take this to um, an intraday chart. Let's go to a, a 15 minute chart, okay? Now, when you go to an intraday, sometimes you have to fix this too. And because we're going with a much faster time frame, we need a faster responding indicator. And a lot of times what you will see me do is the eight EMA will become that indicator for that shorter term time frame to help me see when the stock has finished its downtrend and started to move up in those charts. And it doesn't matter how short a time frame you go. If you use five minutes, it works just the same. But I will tighten it up a little bit if I'm looking at an intraday chart. Doesn't mean that you have to because you can see if you use that 17 EMA on here, it works really, really well. The 8 EMA just tightens it up that, that little bit more for those little bit closer entries if you're looking for that really fast trade. Okay, if you're looking for those really quick responses. All right to those positions. Very, very simple. Okay. So let's take this um, back to a daily and I'm going to, and I'm going to turn on, um, oops, I want this one. I want the volatility stop. Now you guys know the volatility stop is, is already built into TC2000. And we have the code if you guys get my little ebook on this. A fellow by the name of Steve Combs, a member of the room, wrote the code to put the volatility stop on Thinkorswim charts. So if you want that, you can get it out of my ebook. All you get it, and the ebook is always in. If you go to uh, the YouTube channel, go to um, that series on consistent profits. In the description of the video is links links to the ebook and you can get that and the link in the ebook takes you right to the the download or the code that you need for thinkorswim if you want to put that indicator on thinkorswim now i want to take a second here and i just want to let everyone know that there's no magic about the volatility stop either what I was looking for in this, when I started messing with the volatility stop, and I tested this on all different kinds of time frames, all different kinds of settings, and I ended up coming to, there's no perfect in here, but I ended up coming to the conclusion that the best one for me, for the swing trading that I do, is this setting. It's a true range period of 10, multiplier of 1.5. Okay, And even though this is kind of designed to help you find your stop loss on a trade, it has the happy benefit of showing you trends, support, and resistance. Okay, so I've got mine set to red to green, and you guys know that, red to green. And this indicator helps me see price support in a chart. It helps me see price trend. I get these beautiful support levels. Now, when you look at this chart, I don't want anyone looking at this chart initially saying, the first thing I have to do is I have to look at the hard right edge and determine whether or not this is an entry right now. Remember, what we're talking about today is determining the trend and finding stocks that are finding simple little tools, simple little indicators that'll help you identify the trend. So with the volatility stop, would you guys say PepsiCo is trending? Okay, so we've passed that hurdle, right? We found a chart that's trending now what do we do? Now we go back and we, we um, take that chart and we analyze that position. Where's the setup? Where's the trade? Don't be trying to use the volatility stop as, as the tool that gives you the entry signal. The entry signal is price. 
it's always going to be price. And it always has been price. That's the entry signal. Okay, so we have to mark up our chart and wait for those trades. So now that I know that PepsiCo using the volatility stop is in a beautiful, concise trend, it's respecting support, resistance. I put that chart into a list, I mark it up and I wait for the next entry into the trade. I don't try to chase a trade. I don't try to rush into the trade. If the trade, if I, if I don't see this chart until it's right here, there's not a chance I'm going to trade it. Not one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up that chart and I'm going to wait for the next entry into the trade. And I don't care how long it takes. I can wait for the next entry in the trade to get the easy entry. I don't want to chase. I don't want to, none of that stuff should come into play. What we're trying to do in this class today is show you how you find those, determining those trends, finding those trends with those simple, simple little tools. The fact that this helps us see support, resistance, and trend and also helps us determine where our stop loss maybe should be is not important initially. We want to identify those good charts. Okay. Now I want to show you, and you got, I think you, some of you have seen this enough. You know, it works on a weekly, you know, it's going to work on a 15 minute chart. You know, it's going to work on a five minute chart. It doesn't matter. It's going to be very, very effective at helping you see the trend of the trade. And that's what we have to look for first. Look for those stocks that are trending, that fit us personally in those trades. Now, Rick, was playing around one night and, and this is one of those um, happy happenstances that and really is a stroke of genius he was playing around in the middle of one night couldn't sleep and he took that volatility stop and and I'm a, I've got another one over here and he happened to take that volatility stop and wrapped it around his initial was the 17 EMA and you guys have seen that class. You've seen the class on the Trendinator. The Possum Lodge Indicator. <laughs> it's built into the LTA scanner. Okay. And what we're looking for in here, and does anyone, does anyone not see the trend here? I want you guys to understand that if I shut this off, and turn on the 17 EMA, it's virtually identical. But the stroke of brilliance in what, what um, Rick came up with that night was the fact that this gives us that clear color determinated indicator when the downtrend is over and the uptrend begins. It gives us that very simple, clear and concise. All right, stock is in a trend. Does it tell us that this is an entry? No, it doesn't tell us that there's an entry. Once again, price tells us when there's an entry. But it does help us identify or find that trend. <clears throat> okay. And that's what we're talking about. How do we find the trend? How do we get that chart that's giving us that good price action? Mm hmm. 
very simple way to do that using the 17 EMA. Now you could, is there any reason why we couldn't change this to a 34 EMA? There's no magic in this. Change it to a 34 and have it work well also. Now when you change it to the 34, it's gonna give you that smoother. There's less noise in this, right? You get that trend that's a little bit cleaner because it's a little bit loose. Okay, so there's, there's no magic about the 17, there's no magic about the 34. It's just finding that one that cleans up that trade enough. To put us into the right stocks that we need to look for. If we're trend traders, okay? Doesn't determine the entry, it doesn't determine any of those things. All right, I'm gonna take this back and go back to a 17. You can see that tightens it up a little bit. Remember, the tighter you run these things, the more stocks that you're gonna miss. The tighter and tighter you get with your indicators, the more stocks that you're gonna miss out if you're looking for those trades because they're going to, uh, there's going to be a bunch of noise. If you, if for a matter, as a matter of fact, if you take this and make this an ADMA, if you make this the T line, watch what happens to the chart. We start getting these red dots coming in. Now this one's pretty clean, but you know, anything with a little bit of volatility in it, it starts to flip back and forth. It starts to add confusion or noise to the trade. Okay. But what I will tell you is the 8 EMA works really, really well on short-term charts. Let me go to like the diamonds and do a 15 minute. And if you're looking for day trading, that just works really well. Providing you those nice signals when we've crossed over, we're holding support and buyers are coming into play. works really really well for that you can see the short trade setting up right here can't you fall through consolidate holding failing pattern downtrend it gives you that really clear signal that you're on what side of the trade you're on or the trend that you're on and where you should be considering your position Hey, Al, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Um, I've, um, no, 22. No, I haven't. And here's the first thing that happens, Al. And, and here's something I want to caution you on because I'll get questions like that all the time. Well, why can't I use the 18 EMA? Fine. Use the 18 EMA. Don't overthink this. <laughs> Remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to find trend. Don't overcomplicate this. Once again, the first thing that happens when we start talking about indicators, and this happens everywhere, I've never seen a conversation about indicators that a group of people could agree on an indicator because somebody always wants to tweak it. Somebody always wants to try to manipulate it just a little bit more. Well, why can't we do this? And, and I want you to get, it's fine if you want to do that. Okay. I'm not telling you, you can't do that. What I'm telling you is the more you do it, there's an endless number of possibilities that you will forever be trying to to evaluate what what's the best.
Is the 17 EMA, is the 34 EMA, is the 8 EMA some kind of perfect magical indicator? No. It's an aid to help us see the direction of a chart. Nothing more. If you want to modify it a little bit, if you want to put a little different spin on it for you, get her done. As long, excuse me, as long as you can prove that it works, do it. But once, but once you start going down that rabbit hole, just know that it never ends. You can tweak to your life. I mean, well, I spent years tweaking indicators, writing indicators, thinking I was some kind of, um, you know, I must be some kind of a, um, a genius because I could write my own indicators. I'll talk about a bunch of baloney. That's it. There's nothing new under the sun. Let's think about it for a second. What are indicators calculated on? Time passing, volume, and price moving. Almost every indicator out there is based on those three factors. There's people out there that will just, they will die on the sword for a Bollinger Band. And when you tell them that a Bollinger Band is nothing more Then two lines with a, with a moving average in the middle and it's just a standard deviation off of that, they won't believe you. No, there's got to be something more to it. No, it's a moving average, guys. All they're doing is a calculation off of the moving average. That's it. There's no magic. It's a moving average. So indicators are wonderful if they're used correctly with the right mindset. They're not there to give you the perfect entry. They're never intended to be perfect. You can find an indicator that works just perfectly for one chart. And that same indicator doesn't work as cleanly or efficiently with another chart because of the change in volatility, the change of the price action in the chart. So when I say there's literally endless possibilities, once you start going down that rabbit hole, you'll spend all of your time trying to tweak stuff and never get around to actually making any money. Did that for a long time. So be careful of that. So, uh, you know, I've, I've made a point of saying over and over and over, there's no magic in the 17 EMA. There's no magic in the 34 EMA. There's no magic in the 8 EMA. They're simply calculations of the price action, helping us determine whether or not we have an opportunity here for a stock that could trend. Give us a little bit of a competitive edge. Help us identify and see that shift in the chart. Does this make any sense, guys? Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay, now let's take this down to, after we find those trades, I'm going to take this one more step because it's it's always it's never any fun unless we talk about um, <clears throat> whether or not um, there's a trade here. Okay. Would everyone agree with the 17 EMA trendinator that that Ford is trending? If we shut off the trendinator and we turn on the 17 EMA, would everyone agree that the 17 EMA is trending? If we change it to the 34 EMA, can we all agree? <clears throat> Whoops, not 345 days. I thought, wow, what's going on there? <laughs> 
that <clears throat> Ford is trending. Okay, so if we can all agree that Ford is trending, now what we need to do is we need to determine whether or not there's a trade here. Is there a setup that would work for us? So if we go back over here, <clears throat> and I, let me shut off all of my lines here for a second, and let's just turn on the simple volatility stop. Oops, wrong one. It's just based on price action. Is that giving us good support and resistance information in the chart? I think it is, right? It's identifying to us that we have a pretty solid level of support down here. And it's also identifying that we have resistance right here. Consolidation. It's also told us that we have trend. We already know that we have trend. Okay, so now our job is to, to determine entry into this trade, whether or not or when we want to get into that position. You all know that we got into this trade the other day, and I mentioned to everyone that I thought it was an early entry. Okay, when I pull this chart back and I do evaluation of the price action, remember that's step number two. Evaluate the trade, evaluate the stock. Why should you care about this stock? First, we found out that we have a trend. Now let's see if there's anything in here for us. And I start marking up this chart, finding support levels, finding resistance levels, trends, downtrends, those kind of things. I see a stock that broke through a major resistance and is holding. Above it is support. So I'm looking for this stock to move toward a trend. Now we have this current shorter term trend right here. But notice that I've also marked the longer term trend on the chart. We've all seen this in the past, right? Where the shorter term trend, we moved up too fast. And then the stock has to spend more time in consolidation or even pullback to come back to the longer term trend. Doesn't throw this out of the mix of a good possible trade. It just means we have to be patient for the position. So um, I entered this trade as an early entry into the trade, hoping that this is going to be, and it is a hope because I never know whether a trade's gonna work or not. Okay, but I have the information in the chart giving me clues that the odds may be in my favor here. I have a trend. I have a stock holding support. I have a stock that's consolidated moving over toward trend. All I need is those buyers to start stepping up in here and picking it up. This is really no different than our, than our trade that we did the other, a while back here in Apple. It's the same trade. Get rid of some of these lines here. I don't know why I did those. I must have been explaining something to somebody. Um, we find a trend. We wait for the trade. There's that upper resistance. There's that lower resistance. And we wait for the entry into the trade. We know that stocks like to come back to their trend. And that just simply was an identification of the stock responding to the trend. Uh, Valerie, no. On this current trade in Ford, my stop is below current support. If, if this doesn't hold this trend, I don't want to hold that stock all the way over to the long term. I would just close the trade and wait for the next entry into the trade. If it's got to move all the way over there, I'll wait for it. So I'll close the trade. So underneath the current price support, I'm out. Now, if I were doing something in a longer term trade, that might be different. I'd have to do an evaluation of the longer term chart. OK. 
Okay. Now, this works for the uptrend. What about the downtrend? <clears throat> when we just picked up the IWM trade the other day, does this did this help us determine did these indicators help us determine the possibility of that short trade how many made money on that short trade on iwm i know quite a few folks did some folks took profit on that trade already Okay, all it was was an identification that the stock had failed, rallied back to resistance, and was starting to show failure. If we turn on the volatility stop indicator, what did it tell us? It told us almost the perfect entry for a short trade. Yes, you're right, it was also a blue ice failure. That's correct. Okay. But what I'm trying to point to here more than more than the pattern itself, Alan, is that the indicator, if we avoid predicting, if we avoid any of that other stuff, we let the indicators tell us where support and resistance are, then we have an opportunity here in that trade, right? Nothing particular fancy here. I'm just following the price action of the chart. Okay. At the close, and just to give you an idea, I, I did 10 contracts on this. All right. And I, I want to say it's up 25% or something, 24, 25% at the close on Friday. Now, how cool is that? Now, a lot of you guys took profits on it. I'm using that IWM position to hedge my account for the weekend. I wanted the protection over the weekend in case we get some kind of a news event or something to protect my account. So I held it, even though I have really uh, very nice profits in the trade, like 18... Uh, well, no, it was, it was 1800 I think it moved back up to like $1,600 because we didn't, we dipped and then rallied back up in that position. The, the amount of money is not important. The percentage is, and the fact that we found that setup with these simple indicators, didn't try to... Didn't try to overanalyze, didn't try to be any kind of a superhero here. I didn't try to predict the trade was going to fail. In fact, if you guys remember, it was, I was looking at a short-term chart. Okay. I was looking at a short-term chart right in here. And I asked you guys close to the end of the day, I said, anybody else thinking short? Uh, Don, yeah, June 160. Thank you, Aaron. June 160. <clears throat> Which, by the way, follows our rules, right? You guys know, if I'm going to put out a trade, it's always going to follow the rules. It's going to be an option that's somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. It's going to have sufficient open interest. It's going to have a relatively tight bid S spread. There won't be any other trade that I ever send out. Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a second, Aaron, before you say that. Yes, the 158, 159 would work, but is the price pattern correct? to enter that short trade right now using that 15 minute chart. If you use that 15 minute chart, it's not the right pattern, right? We'd be chasing this trade. The reason this gave us almost an immediate profit is because we waited for the rally back and entered that trade at the right time. 
We don't want to chase the short down if you're using the 15 minute. Now, if you're using a daily and you're looking for that little bit longer term trade, the daily, this is, this is the entry, guys. There's your failure pattern, an evening star pattern, right at price resistance, right at the 50 day moving average. Yes, it's a bear flag. Okay. <clears throat> and you can't ask for a better group of um, indicators here showing us trouble moving average wise right there at resistance. But my point of this is, is by using that simple indicator, it helped us identify that trade. Now, what if we used, I'm gonna go over here to this chart. What if we used on the IWM daily chart, could we use the, the 34 EMA to have done the same thing? Huh, look at that. 34 EMA marked out resistance helped us identify that bear flag formation. I'll be darned, who'd have thought? An indicator so loose as the 34, didn't require any fancy stuff, didn't require a whole bunch of multiple indicators or any confirming indicators. It told us when that trade set up. Just like it told us when the long trade set up over here. Now, if I change that to a 17, is that gonna change it that much? Still shows us that trade setup. Shows us that trend change. What happened here? We fell apart, right? If I turn this off and turn on the Trendinator, oops, I'm always getting the wrong one here. There go. Turn on the Trendinator. Did that tell us? Did that help us find it? By golly, I believe it did. So it's an identification of those learning and learning to trust, I guess, what you're seeing with your eyes when you're identifying that price pattern in the chart. You're identifying the change of trend. You're identifying the setup to the trend. You're identifying that the stock is putting together a position that merits a trade because it has a relatively low risk. This making some sense, guys? Can you see how we overcomplicate things every single day in our trading? We we overanalyze. We try to we try to impose our will on a chart. We don't have to do that. And here's the other thing that I would say: if you use these simple indicators and the trade doesn't set up, I don't care how much you love that stock or think that stock should be great. If it doesn't set up, it's not a trade, and you shouldn't waste any time on it. So would everyone agree that if we would just settle down a little bit, if we would just focus a little bit on a couple simple indicators, do you think we could improve our trading? Alan has, John's saying it works great. See, we don't have to get too fancy. We have to be patient. We have to be disciplined.
But these trades will put themselves together if we wait for them, if we're patient, if we're disciplined to a plan, if we follow those simple indicators. We have to keep an eye. Remember, price is the entry signal. It's not the indicator. I don't want anybody looking at this and saying, just because of this, this is the short trade. No, the short trade is because of what price did. The indicator helped us see when that was occurring. Okay, the indicator is not a buy sell signal. The price is. Follow the price. Help use the indicators to help you identify that trend or that changing trend and enter those trades. Always. Uh, um, there's a question. Do you consider the general market trend? Um, I don't do those morning prep videos just because I need something to do. I do those morning prep videos because I always consider the condition of the market first. Always consider the condition of the market first. when I'm determining trades. Okay. Uh, James, that's a 17. That's a 17 EMA wrapped around the volatility stop. Now I know there's probably folks in here. How many folks in here don't use TC2000? I know most people, most are, but if you're not using TC2000, I can understand how coming to a class like this could be really, really frustrating because to set this up, to be able to flip back and forth as quickly and uh, as, as I have been able to do here would be frustrating for those on Thinkorswim or other platforms. Okay, it would be really frustrating because it's time consuming. It requires writing of code. Okay, requires the writing of code, requires the writing of all of that. And it can be very, very frustrating. Guys, if, if you want and you can decide whether you want to do this, go to follow this link. They'll give you $25 off. And just get it done. It's it's a hundred and seventy four dollars for the gold version. But um, you still have to if you want live. Excuse me, live prices. Live prices will cost you another fourteen ninety five or something a month. But a hundred and seventy four dollars for a year of charts. That's one trade, guys. That's part of one trade with options. If you can't afford a good set of software for your trading business, you're in the wrong business. And I hate to sound so cruel on that, but get a good set of charts that work. They give you the indicators you want. Don't mess around with that. Don't wait until tomorrow. This is your business. Do you want the better set of tools or do you want something that you can, well, maybe if I work with this enough and manipulate this enough, this might work for me eventually. This is your business, 174 bucks, guys. Don't mess around with this. If you think TC2000 can help you, and I, I will tell you that it helps me, and I think a lot of people in here would tell you they couldn't trade without it. They couldn't trade as effectively without it. Okay. No, it's not going to teach you how to trade. But it will make it very easy for you to identify these signals. Okay. Jay, Jay's asking on the IWM chart, how do you how how you you determine the entry? Well, Jay, if you were following along what I just said just a little while ago, I came on the mic toward the end of the day on Thursday and I was looking at a 15 minute chart 
And I said, is anyone else thinking short? So what, what's the pattern that we trade, Jay, all the time? The patterns that we trade, if we trade long, stock moves up, pulls back, finds support, we wait for buyers to step in, in an uptrend. Stock moves up, Con this time it consolidated over and moves up. That's an, uh, that's an entry signal for a, a trade uh, long. Stock moves up, pulls back, finds support, buyers step in, that's an entry signal long. Short signal is just the opposite. Stock moves down, rallies back to resistance, finds resistance, failure, sellers step in, short trade. That is our short pattern down. It's the same pattern over and over and over. This is the PBO, upside down, pullback opportunity upside down. This right here, is the pop out of the box down same two patterns all the time trend stock moves up pulls back we look for the entry right here stock consolidates whoops stock consolidates over to trend we look for the entry signal right here just flip that upside down this is exactly the same thing Yeah, all of my all of my moving averages <clears throat> Okay, if it's exponential, it's it's exponential. Um um and and it's based on price history. So uh, the source data is price history. So nothing fancy. Average of last And you know, and, and we're talking about minutia here t in that um you could use it on the high you could use it on the low as long as you use that indicator consistently in all your charts works just the same way youtube channel joe go to youtube Right way options. Yep, it's on there. YouTube. Now, if you're terminating a, a swing trade here, um, this is this is where I identified it and said to everyone, are you thinking short? A bunch of people said yes. I went and looked at the index charts, looked at IWM, felt it was the weakest of the bunch, and I took the short trade on um, um, IWM and, and well sent that out and then took the trade on IWM if you're looking at this on a daily chart only your entry is right now it's the failure pattern at price resistance right that's what we're looking for Bob S has mentioned several times the bear flag this is the bear flag it's the failure at price resistance that we look for for a short trade It's the hold at price support that we look for long trades. That's all. Pretty simple stuff, right? If we allow it to be simple stuff, if we overcomplicate it, if we spend all this time trying to tweak and rearrange and redo all of this stuff, if we try to make it complicated we will end up messing ourselves up we got to keep it simple guys keep those simple indicators in mind and it does i don't care i you know if you don't if you don't want the 17 or the 17 trendinator find one 
find one. If I were to change this indicator here, uh, I could change it to something like a 22. Did that really change that all that much? I showed you that if it was the 34, whoops, I did, it didn't change. The 22, that doesn't change it that much. If I, if I make this to a 34, that didn't change it much. Think about that. The 17 is almost half of the 34. Did it change it much? So figure out something that works for you, something that you like. If you feel like the eight, the eight is the bomb. The eight is the thing that's going to make you, um, you know, the T line. If that's going to be the thing that does it for you, then use the T line and stay with the T line. Does the T line work here? One thing I'll, I will tell you, if you use the T line screening for trends, you're going to miss a lot of stocks. It's too tight. But if you use it to screen or put together your ideas for entries, it'll work perfectly. But you have to follow it. You have to trust the pattern. If you make the, the, um, the trendinator based on the eight, Does that work? Whoops. Gotta turn it on. Yeah. See, there's no magic in this stuff. We just have to be a little bit more deliberate about what we look at in a chart, be more considerate or, or concise about our analysis of that and not be so wishy-washy. And what I mean by wishy-washy is always flipping back and forth between all different kinds of things, trying to confirm a trade against multiple different things all the time. It won't work. You'll always be in analysis paralysis if, if you do that. Simple, clean, easy. Can you find good short trades here? How about this short trade right here? Could there have been a better short trade entry than that right there? How about a long trade? Could there have been a better long trade entry than this right here? Holding price support, buyer stepping in. Or that one right there, breaking through that resistance, moving up. Or how about this one, holding that price support, buyer stepping in. Could there be better trades than that? Make sense, guys? Just keep it simple. Drill it down, get con get um, get comfortable, I guess. And you have to you're going to have to go through a lot of charts and determine which one of those simple indicators is the one for you. But then build your build your structure around it, build your trading around it. Uh, yeah, you really could, Bob, um, um, particularly if you went to, um, well, you could do it with swing trade, too. You could build um, a great strategy just around the indexes themselves and just trading the indexes with an indicator like that. If you um, if you go to a shorter term chart, you know, um, pick any time frame. OK. Pick any time frame, you can build a strategy around it. So yeah, I agree. You don't need to have tons and tons of charts. 
you need to have a few that are trending where the stock where the prices are moving okay Um, all I did is I put the volatility stop indicator on the chart. And instead of basing it on the price action of the chart, instead of basing it on price, I based it off of an, an indicator. So I turned, put a 80 EMA, a 17 EMA on there. I put, put that um, on there and I base it on that. Again, if you don't have TC2000, it's going to be a lot more difficult to do that. But it's real simple and easy here, and you can choose. You know, you can say, oh, well, 17 is too far for me. I want the 8. Okay, there you go. All done. No more programming. The trades that we have been talking about here over and over in the morning videos, does this work on those? How about PepsiCo? Did that work on PepsiCo? Did it work on MDLZ? Has it worked on Colgate Palm Olive? It absolutely does work. Anybody see why I'm thinking eBay could be a short? And I actually don't use the eight. I use the 17. I think the eight's too tight for me. But um, anybody see why I think eBay could be a short? Anybody see why I think Boeing could be short? Keep it simple. So guys, I hope you got something out of this today. I know this was a little bit different class. It was just, it. I just wanted to focus in on it because they had such a big response after last Tuesday's discussion about, you know, just these simple indicators that I wanted to just do a full class on it. But hopefully you can see that if we, if we narrow our field of vision down to just stocks that are trending, so we're not wasting our time looking through just a random list of stocks. We want stocks that fit us personally, stocks that have um, fit our, our volume requirements, our uh, fit our um, price requirements for a trade. Um, you guys know that for my options, and uh, I'm always using that CBOE list, for my options always i i'm not i'm not scanning i'm not looking for trades outside of this everything in my lta scanner comes from this list every scan scanning this list only i don't care about the universe i care about the stocks that mean something to me that are setting up for me that are the quality of stocks that i want for me And then from that list, I determine those that are in trends and then I go and I mark them up and I analyze the price action and I wait for the next entry into the trade. Just like Boeing, is Boeing ready to trade yet? Some, some that are very aggressive may say, yeah, I could, I could trade this short right now. I can't, I won't. I need to see a failure in here of some kind. I need to see sellers coming in. 
whatever that may look like. I don't know what it'll look like. Then I, then I take that short. Okay. But is it, is it hard to see that the stock is trending down and now I'm preparing and waiting for the next entry into the trade? And by the way, don't make the entry next entry into the trade that difficult either. You don't have to stare at this chart to find the next entry into the trade. Let me just clarify that for just a second. Draw a line on the chart. Make sure it's nice and straight. If we had a failure to drop below that candle right there, that would be significant, right? Make that an alert. Just set an alert on your chart. That's all you got to do set an alert, make the trade come to you. You don't have to stare at that chart to find it. After you've identified the trend, after you've done the technical analysis, after you've determined that that stock could set up a trade, put alert on the chart and wait for the trade to come to you. Don't stare at the chart. And then the, the software does the job. The software says, hey, stock dropped down below that level. You might want to take a look at it. Go take a look at it. You've already determined that the stock works for you trend-wise, everything else. If you're an option trader, you could even go in and evaluate that and say, hey, yeah, there's options in here that would really fit me, that would work real well. Now I just have to wait for the entry. Don't waste your time staring at a chart wiggling around. Place an alert. Where do you want to see an entry? What do you want to see the chart to do? What do you want to see it do, I mean? And if it if that if if what you want to see it do creates an entry for you, put an alert on the chart and let the software do the job. It will bring you to the trade when it's time and make that entry evaluation. We don't have time to sit during the day and stare at a candle wiggling around waiting for an entry. Set an alert, wait for the trade to come to you. Make sense? Aaron's mentioning C, possible short. Would you guys agree? I do. C is a possible short. Breaking down trend, rallying back toward resistance, showing the potential of failure. That's a short all day long. Look at it at the volatility stop just by the volatility stop alone. That's a short. Look at it at a failure at the 50 day moving average. That's a short. Okay, so now we've determined this has got a potential short. What do we want to do with that? Set an alert. Let the trade come to you. That's right. Set an alert. All you got to do is wait. It may work. It may what not work. Doesn't matter though, does it? We've got no skin in the game if we set an alert on it and make the trade come to us. We wait. Cool stuff. Thank you guys very much for being here today. I appreciate it a lot. Hope you got something out of this. I know it was a little bit different, but ah, thanks guys. Very nice comments. Thank you there. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I will get this rendered um, and put up on YouTube as soon as it can. It'll be sometime this weekend. Okay. Get simple in your trading. Put together a simple plan. Get disciplined to that plan. Set alerts and be patient for those trades to come to you. And your, your trading will improve. Has to. Just almost has to improve. All right. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe. We'll see you right back here, bright and early on Monday.